Dr. Andrew Yen over at St. John's, and uh, we thought we'd take a few moments to talk about the issue of stiffness after total knee replacement. Now, total knee replacement is a highly successful operation. Uh, most people do exceptionally well, but there will be a small minority of patients who will struggle getting their range of motion again after surgery. Now, people will get range of motion, sometimes quickly, sometimes in a steady fashion, and sometimes in a very slow fashion. What we're speaking about specifically here are those people who plateau and can no longer make improvements in range of motion despite deliberate and consistent physical therapy. One of the key parameters that we will follow after knee surgery is range of motion. And range of motion is an objective measure of flexibility, how much the knee will extend, how much the knee bends. And we look at this in two ways. One, in terms of the functional return, and we also look at it in terms of the number and how that relates to a possible issue of stiffness. So numerous studies have been done looking at the amount of motion necessary to do basic activities necessary in Western society. So for example, a patient will need 70 degrees of flexion to do normal walking on level ground. They'll need 20 degrees more, 90 degrees to go upstairs, and actually 100 degrees, they'll need even more motion to come downstairs, and about 105 degrees to get dressed. Anything, any motion beyond that makes all these activities much more comfortable and much more accessible. Now, some patients, despite physical therapy, will have persistent stiffness and they'll have limitations in these functional needs. And we categorize them, their degree of stiffness as mild, moderate, severe. So mild stiffness is less than 100 degrees. And those patients should be able to walk on level ground. They should be able to go up stairs. They may come downstairs one at a time and they may have some trouble getting their shoes and socks on. Patients with moderate disease are able to walk, but they have difficulty with stairs and chairs and hills. And those with severe disease or severe stiffness have difficulty with even walking. Okay, so those are the three main categories of stiffness. One of the hardest things to understand is why stiffness occurs. Uh, and it's also hard for surgeons and patients to know who is at risk for becoming stiff after a total knee replacement. Um, and there are some risk factors, there are some clues. It, it turns out when a knee replacement is put in well, but a patient still has stiffness, then it seems that there is a biologic issue happening internally in the knee. And that is called arthrofibrosis. Arthro means joint fibrosis, refers to the fibroblast or the connective tissue developing in the knee. And it appears that there is an excessive formation of fibroblasts or connective tissue and collagen within the knee. And that's leading to the scarring and the stiffness. And it, it really doesn't happen very on, but there have been numerous studies showing that the rate of postoperative stiffness can vary from 2.3 to 5.8%. And then there are more studies looking at what are the risk factors or how could we predict stiffness. And the three most common ones are the degree of preoperative flexibility, prior trauma, and prior surgery. So in terms of preoperative motion, it seems that patients who are flexible before surgery are likely to be flexible after. However, those who have stiffness before surgery are at increased risk of developing stiffness afterwards. Trauma is another risk factor for stiffness. There have been numerous studies showing patients who had tibial plateau fractures, femoral nails, tibial nails, or any type of injury where the bone has been injured and the soft tissue has been injured of having increased stiffness after surgery. And then finally, it's also become clear that anybody who's had prior surgery is at increased risk for stiffness and a possibly a manipulation, including a prior arthroscopy, an ACL reconstruction, or an osteotomy. Now, it's important to understand that physical therapy and ongoing follow-up are the mainstays in helping a patient regain range of motion. 
Uh, but for patients who just cannot make progress despite their best efforts, despite their best intention, knee manipulation becomes a very important alternative pathway to improve range of motion. And knee manipulation is a very important part of a post-operative protocol in patients with knee stiffness. And the prognosis after knee manipulation is actually quite good. This most recent study by Ghani in 2012 showed an average increase of almost 30 degrees in flexion after surgery. And another paper showed that after manipulation, almost all patients had the flexibility to do all required of activities of daily living. So it restores function, the type of motion needed for the function that we just talked about. Another question often comes up with timing. Uh, these can be done early. They can be done really within the first three to six months after surgery. Uh, I think it's most appropriate to proceed when it becomes clear that a patient is no longer making progress with physical therapy. But I do think it's advisable to give the patient and to give the knee itself time to get for, beyond, uh, through those first one to two months before bringing up the discussion of knee manipulations. We've seen countless knees really turn the corner at months two, three, four, and five. And then very importantly, it, related to the issue of timing, there are numerous papers also showing there is no difference in outcome between early and late manipulation. Both time periods seem to work very well. And so we also thought it was important for patients to understand what actually happens during a manipulation. Uh, a patient's knee is completely relaxed so that the quadriceps and the muscular tissues aren't fighting. And then we can very gently take a knee through a range of motion to stretch out the underlying connective tissue. And this is so helpful in helping the patient get past this hurdle of stiffness. So we can see from that most recent video that the manipulation is far more gentle than many people realize. Uh, we've heard so many stories of what people think it is and how aggressive and violent it is, but it's actually very gentle and controlled because the leg tissues and the leg muscles are relaxed. Now, postoperatively, pain management and physical therapy are an important part of recovery. So a patient will get an anesthetic nerve block, which will last for three to five days to make those first couple days a lot easier. But we do expect the patient to be moving immediately. Again, this really isn't surgery. It's more of a manipulation or therapy of anesthesia. So we expect the patient to go home the same day uh, and to be driving the next day. Uh, a patient will have inflammation from the manipulation, and so we'll prescribe anti-inflammatories to reduce swelling. And we also believe that patients should resume physical therapy shortly after the manipulation, even the same day or within one to two days. Now, one question comes up is the use of a CPM. The CPM stands for Continuous Passive Motion Machine. And historically, it was part of knee replacement recovery 20 years ago. But more recently, it's fallen out of use, uh, mostly because studies have showed over and over again that there was no difference in recovery and range of motion with or without the use of a CPM. And as a result of that, Medicare no longer covers it, as, as do most commercial insurers. Uh, so it is something that is available. Uh, patients will have to pay for it out of pocket in most cases. And then finally, just as a last point, knee manipulation turns out to be very safe when done under an anesthetic. The fracture risk is 0 0.002, or in other words, it's 0.2%. So it's extremely, extremely low. 99.8% of patients are fine afterwards. So in summary, just a few key points on stiffness and the need for manipulation. So total knee replacement is an uh, extremely successful procedure, but one of the hardest things is just regaining flexion after surgery. It's what makes total knee replacement comparatively more difficult than a total hip replacement. The majority of patients will regain their motion naturally under a program of deliberate physical therapy. But again, there will be that small subset of patients who will struggle despite their effort and intentions. Uh, and in these patients, manipulation becomes an important part 
of helping a patient regain their range of motion. And again, uh, I'll leave you with these two quotes. Uh, number one is that manipulation under anesthesia has few risks and is successful in providing functional improvement in the majority of patients. Uh, and secondly, it, it helps a patient regain the motion they need for activities of daily living. And in this recent study from 2012, again, there was almost a 30 degree return in flexion that made life after manipulation a lot easier. There are many papers on stiffness after total knee replacement. We put down some of the references and then you can do a, a deep dive. If that's something that you're interested in. Getting motion back after a knee replacement is one of the most challenging things of knee replacement recovery. Physical therapy will be the mainstay of treatment, but manipulation is always there as a way to help a person who is struggling with range of motion to get back on track. And I, I think it's an important discussion to have with your physical therapist and with your surgeon. Thank you.